Welcome back to Broken and Brilliant. I'm Carrie O'Toole with Carrie O'Toole Ministries, and I'm joined again by Ryan Dobson. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me back. Oh, I we we could I think we could do this for about a week. We should do. We keep doing it. That'll be good. That'll be fun. <laughs> we'll keep doing it. We'll yeah. keep doing it. Well, so when we met, we had several conversations about adoption. Yeah. And I thought, let's just chat about adoption. Sure. Let's talk about your adoption in particular, some of the issues you've had growing up, questions that you get asked. Yeah. What do people want to know about adoption? Um, How old were you? Were, was, six weeks. Okay, you were six I was six weeks. weeks, yeah. So here's the things I've learned as I've grown up. Because I know that you've had struggle, well, you had struggles with mm-hmm. your first adopted, and that has worked out now, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many new things that we know. There are new therapies. There are new techniques. Yes. Um, And I'm in a really unique position. Being a Dobson, I get exposed to those things before most people do. Because you've been on the radio, you're seeing the books, people are coming through speaking. And people that are experimental, they have something that, you know, they'll just send it to us. We get sent everything, you Mm. know. So um, I was born with an autoimmune disease, ulcerative colitis, and we had a doctor who overheard my dad talking about it, put me in an experimental medical program where they extracted my own stem cells and grew them in a lab and put them back in me and it mm. cured it. It, I have wow. no, I, yeah. So you had some things that were available to you that maybe a lot of people would totally. Not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the great, I am hum- humbled by it every day. Totally humbled mm. by it every day. Um, there are some things that I know of now that I would do if I had adopted kids because it's available to me. It's not to everyone. It's, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, like what? Well, I guess the example is I was adopted at six weeks. A lot of kids are adopted at birth. You know, mm-hmm. it's like right away. And you think, oh, well, great. You shouldn't have abandonment issues because it was so quick. I mean, it's just six weeks. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, then I went through having kids with Laura, and I think, oh my goodness. You missed that six weeks. Well, it's it's not even that. I mean, in the nine months that she was pregnant, I did a lot of talking to Lincoln and Lucy. A lot. And I know my birth father wasn't around, but somebody was doing a lot of talking. Even if it wasn't to me in utero. You heard stuff. There's familiarity. There's a there's a there's a there is a resonance to voices. There is well, and I also I know that um, babies before they're born in the womb, yeah, they can get a sense for whether there's anxiety, of course. whether there's yep. fear, whether there's... And I'm sure there was all of that knowing mm-hmm. my situation. So my birth mm-hmm. mom was 17. Uh, she and her boyfriend had broken up. They did not get back together. 17, mm-hmm. junior in high school, pregnant. Yeah, lots of anxiety, lots of fear, lots of stress, lots of that going on. There's also a huge biological connection with babies and biological moms. Right. And listen, I'm not saying any of this to discourage anybody from adoption. Mm-hmm. I had a great adoption. I know lots and lots of great adoptions. I'm just telling you something factual. You know, the whole... Well, if you could make it the best outcome, the best yeah. hope for a child, this is... But truly, the, the best plan... The best plan was healthy and no adoption. That's right. The best plan was two, two you know, a mom and a dad and, and you know, marriage and all that stuff. It doesn't work out that way right now. Mm-hmm. And it didn't for my parents. My parents couldn't have any more children after my sister. Mm-hmm. They desperately wanted more kids. They prayed for four and a half years. Uh, and then the Lord brought me to them through adoption. What I say about the treatments is, you know, I went from nine months in a biological mom to six weeks in a foster home to then being placed in my forever home if people want to say that it's, and that's really yeah it's not forever because you're not still living there just, but <laughs> whatever i love people that say that and i know it's sentimental and i know they get you it know that makes way the parents feel good it, for sure it does for sure but my parents are jim and shirley dobson that's who my parents are they're not i know the first names of my biological parents i'm not going to mention that because it's it's not that i don't care but I know who my parents are. Right. My well, parents and, raised and me. you don't need to be speaking publicly about no. it unless my they, parents raised me they right. they paid for everything in my life. They trained me. I mean, they, they still are great role models for me. So it's that all that to say, going from a biological parent to a foster home to my current family, 
was traumatic. It's traumatic yeah. on babies. It is. It, you're in a brand it's new lost. situation. I mean, you're talking about, you know, you went to China. Vietnam. 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 You went to Vietnam and you're flying home with a baby that screamed the entire time. Well, that was one of my questions when we were trying to adopt and we were going to go to South Korea or Ghana or Ethiopia or every other place we tried and got rejected from or just governments and all the shenanigans that we went through. I was like, hey, if we go to South Korea and pick up an 18-month-old or a two-year-old, I'd be pretty ticked. I may not have a great flight home. That could be a huge flight, and you're on a flight with an unconsolable. Right. Well, and we kept five asking. Year old. Yeah, uh, three and a half. Three, three and a half. half. But I remember we Ooh. used to, we were asking <coughs> everyone that we could find that spoke English. Would you please tell him what's going on? Yeah. Because yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. we couldn't even explain it. Right. So here they are just throwing him in with us, oh, telling yeah. him, here's Ma and Ba. What does that even mean? Right, 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 right. When you've been in an institution your entire oh, life, you don't even have right? the semblance of mind of what a family is. How terrifying. So, yeah, let's just throw him on this plane yeah. with you. And I, I wouldn't let him out of his seatbelt. He had never been in a seatbelt before, <sighs> never been restrained. And he pinched me the whole first oh, flight, gosh. which was a couple hours screaming and hitting and spitting you know he didn't know why it was restraining right. him and first you can't all, explain it i can't explain oh, it my goodness. and then the flight attendants kept coming by like people are upset could you calm him down I'm like you're welcome to try yeah, if yeah. i go near him it terrifies him more yeah. do you speak vietnamese can you explain yeah. the situation Cause yeah we're stuck i'm trying and but... by the way what you're doing is a, it's the most beautiful thing the highest sacrifice because people always talk about oh i can't believe your birth mom abandoned you whoa whoa Easy there. Yeah. She carried me as a 17-year-old. Right. For a full term. Are you kidding me? That's that's not abandonment. That's not no. abandonment in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't mean I don't struggle with abandonment issues because biologically, your body yeah, feels talk those about things. That. That's biological. What, 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 how does abandonment play out in your life? How has it through the years? And oh. how have you kind of come to... Where are you at with that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tons of therapy. Gosh, uh, lots of counseling and therapy. Here's this is the, this is what I would do too. There is a, a medical procedure called MDEM, multidimensional eye movement. Um, I wrote about it in my last book. Now I know a lot about EMDR, but yes, not totally. I think they're similar yep. but different. It's in the same vein. It's mm-hmm. just different. Um, and I have firsthand experience with it, and I will give my experience so I can kind of explain it. What it what the theory is, is that when you go through trauma, grief, PTSD, those types of situations, you can have neural pathways in your brain that fragment. They're supposed to be connected, and they get fragmented. And talking about it doesn't reconnect them. Mm-mm. Okay? It doesn't mean talk therapy is bad. I've been to hundreds. It helps you make sense of it. I've been to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, maybe thousands of hours talking. Me therapy. too. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Okay, my dad's a psychologist. Yeah. I'm a fan. I still go to counseling regularly because it's a good idea. Um, and I'll tell you how it did for me because I am going to go back and do this for my adoption stuff. Um, but after Lincoln was born, um, yeah, Lincoln, this is the craziest. We were going to, we got married. Uh, man, you can read the whole book. This is the briefest version. I met my wife on a blind date. I asked her to marry me three weeks later. We got married five months. Oh day, man! Five months after that, on the day I married my wife, I hadn't known her six months yet. Okay, yeah. Um, and we've been together ten years now, and it's just, oh, it's, just, it's the greatest thing in the entire world. She is the greatest thing in the whole world. Um, We were going to wait a year to get pregnant. Uh-huh. I don't know. Six months in, she was like, let's have babies. And I was like, eh, let's. <laughs> You've now known each other a year. <laughs> yeah, seriously, right. Yeah, we've known each other about a year at this point. And she was like, let's have babies. And I was like, totally, we'll start trying in like six months. She's like, let's try now. And I was like, well, you know, we made this plan. And I was, again, I used to be so rigid and so militant and so like black and white and OCD and yeah, all those things. 
Long story short, met with an OB. He was like, oh, you're on birth control. It's going to take six or seven months to get out of your system. And then when you start trying to get pregnant, and he talked for an hour about all the things you can do if you can't get pregnant. And I was like, six or seven months to get out of your system? Well, then we should definitely take you off of it now anyway because that's going to be a year. Right. No big deal. A week later, she was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, a week. In fact, she was probably pregnant then. We just didn't know it. So, yeah, a week later. And I was like, ah, yeah, craziness. Um Difficult pregnancy, but nothing life shattering, not mm-hmm. any dangerous, mm-hmm. you know, situation. Just, you know, Laura was Just nauseous hard. the entire yeah. pregnancy. Yeah. She was throwing not up a fun one. during giving birth <laughs> uh, kind of thing. I know. Right. Um, so second time around, you know, she got pregnant, no big deal, but then miscarried mm-hmm. and then miscarried again and again mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. again. We did four miscarriages mm-hmm. in a row. Wow. Uh, and in the midst of this, tried to adopt three times and got rejected oh, or got wow. closed down three times. And it was bad. It yeah, was really bad. That's a but lot the, of really hard years. The miscarries for me, I, can, I now can process this. Because the MD, um, what's the most reliable one? MD. For me, I started pulling away from Laura because I associated getting close and getting close might lead to other things which could lead to sex. And if it leads to sex, you might get pregnant. And if you get pregnant, you might have another miscarriage. Right. Another loss. And subconsciously, my brain was backing all the way up like, whoa, 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 let's just pull back here. Because I was done. You know, I did not, after three, I was like, three strikes were out. I mean, I was done after two. I felt like I got talked into three, not really by Laura, but just I felt like it was the thing to do. And then four, and Mm -hmm. I was done. And it really did start to affect our marriage because I had pulled back physically and emotionally from her so much. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. Right. And I was talking to our friend Annie, Dr. Annie Curlin, um, great, great PhD in California. In fact, she's the one that introduced me on the blind date to my wife. (laughs) Yeah. And her and her husband did our premarital. So I adore Annie, and she's crazy smart, and she's got this light box therapy thing that she does, and I always tease her and call it Annie's crazy light box and all this stuff. And she was <laughs> telling me about multidimensional eye movement one time. She's like, it really has got some breakthrough stuff. Do you mind if I try it out on you? I'm going through my certificate process. Can you and, be my guinea pig? Well, and she was like through almost to the PhD level, mm-hmm. but just had to do some, and I was like, sure. Because my philosophy on virtually everything is I'll try it, and if it works, I'll keep doing it. If it doesn't, I won't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, when I tried CrossFit and the paleo diet, I was like, I will totally try it. If it doesn't work, I'll never do it again. Well, I'm still doing it now, mm-hmm. and I'm more extreme works. on it because right. it completely worked. But there's been lots of things that haven't worked. Mm-hmm. I've had counselors I've gone to that didn't work out, and I don't right. go back because it's not worth it. Right. And it's the nuttiest thing. You sit in a chair and you look straight forward and she picks up some, and I have been talking to her like I'm talking to you. It was not like a counseling session. I'm right. not weepy and blah, blah, blah. None of that's going on. I'm just like this. And we were talking about, um, I was talking about some of my sadness from our miscarriages because I kind of just felt like this. I just felt like there's that knot I couldn't get rid of. Right. I didn't understand what was going on with it, but I just couldn't get rid of it. And I talked about my divorce and we can go into that later if you want to. Um, and some of those things, she's like, okay. And she unrolls this thing, and it looked like a whole roll of colored pencils. And she pulls a bunch of colors out and wraps her band around it and then starts kind of doing this. And, you know, I'm looking forward, and she's doing this with it. And I was like, this is a, this is, really? <laughs> this is going to help me. This is what's going on? Oh, my goodness. And then I'm thinking, is it like hypnotism? Like some people get to it, some people don't. Do I fake it? I don't even know what to fake. Right. If I tried to fake it, I don't even know what I'm what supposed to What am I supposed to be doing and here? And minutes and minutes and minutes are going by and nothing's going on. And I was like, this is so ridiculous. Oh, no. And she gets over here and I went, I burst into tears. Uncontro- mm. Instantaneously, uncontrollably. It was as if I just got the phone call from Laura that we had lost the baby. I mean, it mm. was that grief was so powerful and so sudden and so overwhelming and she turned that bundle of colored sticks one way and it was like you had turned a volume knob up and it got worse um and i saw the look on her face because she saw the look on my face and she instantly turned it the other way and it went it got mm-hmm. less i don't understand I, again i don't understand the process or why it works I can't tell you why those things are doing what they're doing. But you just know it does work or it worked for you. Here's the truth. I don't care. But 
we did that. And then as she turned it down further and further, I started feeling better and better and better. And she's still turning it like a volume knob going down, 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 turns it off, kind of goes like this, puts it away. And I mean, I was like, you know, white knuckling. I didn't know what to do. It was really weird. I was a little bit scared. I was totally nervous. And she was, you know, we were talking a little bit and I couldn't quite move beyond. And she goes, are you okay? And I go, no, I feel like I'm going to burst into tears again. She goes, oh, well then we're not done yet. And I was like, oh no, we're done. I'm... <laughs> I'd rather not have that happen again. She's like, no, you can do this. It's okay. And we did it a couple more times. Took about two hours. And I'm telling you, I knew driving home I was different. It sounds like voodoo. It sounds like hocus pocus. Mm. I get that. I know Christians predominantly are terrified of new things and all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, all the struggles I had with <clears throat> the miscarries and the intimacy with my wife and the pulling away... It was gone like that. And she noticed it without me saying anything. Hmm. When we got up the next day, we were at our friend's house because we were staying in California. And she was like, what happened? And I go, it's different, right? And she's like, yep, it's, I can see it. Hmm. She's like, you can, I can see it in you. And I don't, I don't know how to explain that. But that's for me, I would do uh, MDEM with my adopted kids. I would do it. In fact, I've got a friend in Breckenridge. I'm going to Breckenridge in a couple weeks. I've got a friend in Breck who's got adopted kids from uh, Ethiopia and Rwanda and, and other places. Um, and a couple of her kids are going to go through it and do that. Wow. Because they've been through some traumatic experiences in their own country before they came over. Uh, <clears throat> and those types of things, like all technology, is becoming more and more ubiquitous. It's becoming more and more commonplace. So you can go and do things like that. I've heard that EMDR works well with adopted mm -hmm. kids. Also neurofeedback. Those are things I, that are all very yep. non-invasive that don't require the language skills yes. and the emotional right ability. Because, yeah, my son's seven. And I'm like, how are you feeling? And he's like, I don't know. Right. And I'm like, come on. You have to know yourself, you know. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's seven. That's right. You know, it's... That was cool. And then add I'm, trauma into it. Yeah, and for sure. They just, especially when the trauma comes, like with you, at birth and at six weeks old. I don't remember and, any of that. No, and it's all pre-verbal. Sure. You, you can't express things yeah. about that when it's Nor just Nor do I like, even know it. No. But I do struggle with the feelings of abandonment. And I, and you know, so with Laura and I, this is what I said on my podcast. I mean, on the video blog, uh, youtube.com slash James Ryan Dobson. Virtually everything I have is James Ryan Dobson, except Facebook, because they only allowed you to change it once. <laughs> and I had J. Ryan Dobson. Whatever. Um, everybody's got something. It, you know, we all struggle with something. And maybe not. But that's why I was saying it's not a discouragement to adoption, because all kids have something. Lincoln is more sensitive than Lucy. He will struggle with things differently than she does. She will struggle with things... Differently than he does. She cries more than he does. Is it because she's a girl and she's hormonal? And I, say, I don't know, but she cries more than he does now. Um, they will have their own struggles and issues. They'll struggle with fame. Lincoln is realizing now that we are famous and doesn't understand why. And he and I are dealing with those types of things. I struggle with abandonment, probably by and large because of my adoption. Here's the truth. It's easier for me because I know specifically where my struggle comes from. Mm -hmm. I don't have some... You can name it. Yeah. My parent yeah. said something to me when I was da-da-da, or I got teased, and I think, you know, by a number of people about this one thing, and I think that's where it comes from. I know where mine comes from. And so I deal with that. I'm going down to Dallas to meet with another doctor. Andy thinks is more advanced than she is, although how could that be? Um, <laughs> then he'll deal with my adoption stuff, and I'll go down there and, and do some stuff with coloring right. sticks too. Because... You want to be healthy. Yeah. You want to I, get and there. I want it to be better for my, for my, you know, I went on a sabbatical a year ago and I, what I learned most on that was unconsciously I started placing the pressure of being a Dobson on my kids mm. and I didn't, and I rebel against it so much that I'm like, I'm not going to make my kids suffer under that. And I was doing all the things that other people did to me, all those types of things. And it was such an eye opener. It was such a wake up call. And I just sat back and went, none of this stuff matters. You know, like if people want to listen to me on my podcast, great. If they don't, I don't care. It's okay. And I don't, I don't say that crassly or, or, or pridefully. No, it is important. But also, I'm doing this because I feel you like can't I can put that pressure on yourself. I feel like I can help people. Mm -hmm. If you like the advice I'm giving, if it's the advice that you need or want to hear, but there are other people that will say things differently than me. Um, 
I just, you know, I want my kids to love the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. I want them to be, to love the Lord and to get along with each other and to get along with me and Laura. Beyond that, man, I don't care. I just don't, I don't care. Lincoln, we gave him a mohawk when he was, <laughs> I, mean, I gave him one at two, two and a half, three, something like that. But we gave him a mohawk and he wanted it colored. So we went down to Sally Beauty Supply and we got all this spray and hair dye and the one behind the counter was probably early 60s, I think. I don't know. Whatever. Mom-ish. Maybe <laughs> like grandma-ish kind of around yeah. that. And, and she goes, oh, is it is it crazy day, crazy hair day at school tomorrow? And I go, no. And she goes, oh. Ex- <laughs> Literally, she... I can do it. Look. Oh. And I remember thinking, who cares? He's got blue hair for a day. We homeschool, so no one's saying anything anyway, but... My goodness, of all the things to care about, that's the last thing I'm going to care about. Yeah, I and remember I'm when sure. that was an issue for me. Well, and, and then finally you kind of grow out of And it. there's going to be something let for me go, too. Let it go, let it go. There'll be something for me. He's either going to want to... I almost started singing the song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. I, I'm learning what's actually important. You know, like the defiance is important. The craziness of kids, ah, whatever. Who gives, who cares? Like... I looked in Lucy's room. She's drawn all over one of her walls. One of our chairs has Sharpie on it. Like, I just decided while she's at this age, when she's Lincoln's age, we could repaint and get new carpet. And But until then, we can't have nice things. She draws on stuff. And the truth is, <laughs> I just don't care. Right. Whatever, I guess. Don't draw my stuff. Right. But well, And you're the adult, so put your stuff where she can't draw on it. Yeah. You know, but... Yeah. And I know I'm not every parent anymore. I'm not, you know, and that's the whole, you know, the strictness and all that. I'm not, it's not for everybody, but I'm just, you know, it's what I said in my, in my podcast tagline. It's sharing the things I'm learning and the people I'm meeting to help us all be better families or have better families. That's, I'm just, I'm learning. You know, I think there was a generation before me that's like, we're the experts. I know this to be true, and it's the only truth, and you do the truth my way. I don't know. I I believe in the Lord. I think that's the truth. But as far as getting getting along in my marriage, oh, it's way different than other people's marriages. I got to learn to get along. I'm terrible to live with. I'm, I, I know I am. I know I'm hard to live with, but we can all do this. But you got to stop, like, stop watching reality TV. Seriously, stop watching... Real Housewives and stuff like Because people think like, oh, if I'm not having screaming fights, I must not have a good relationship. Right. Uh, Where's the passion if you're not? Yeah. Joshua Straub. I don't know if you've ever interviewed Josh Straub. He's been on our podcast. Oh, his yeah. book, Safe House. Yes. you got to get him on to talk about Safe House. Yeah. That's exactly what it ought to be. The world is going to give you so well, much. Well, Josh and I met because we're both attachment geeks. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember talking to him one time and he's like, I just love this. There, I can geek out here because I get I talk about this all the time, yeah. and other people are like, "Oh." <laughs> but it's when when your husband's at work, someone's giving him crap. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but someone's giving him a hard time. His boss, his coworker, that petty person. You know, if your husband listening, someone's giving your wife the same thing. It's it's kids. Life's hard. The neighbor, whatever it is, make your house safe. Whatever you gotta do. Just make it safe. Just yeah. like when your kids get home, if they're getting teased outside in the house, mm-hmm. love. Right. Make sure, yeah, they got to obey the rules. I get it. But but do it in a way yeah. that's with compassion, with understanding. Yeah. I just down. wish. I found a video. Or I can't even believe I'm going to say this publicly. I found a video when Lincoln was like two years old and I'm trying to get him to count to 10, which he could do. Because I have video of, it, of him counting to 10, but I wanted it like a clean take. And I'm holding his pacifier hostage. And he's weeping. And I'm like, just count to 10. I'll get back to you. Just count to 10. And he's like, ah. <laughs> Cr- Stress, dad. Video ends with him crying and not counting. And I was like, ah, uh, the worst parent. Lucy's four. I don't know if she can count to 10. <laughs> Probably. But she's happy. But here's the truth. It doesn't matter. Like She'll that's a whole there. other set of the school. There. Yeah. Ray Moore did a thing called School Can Wait. If you keep, especially boys, you can keep a boy out of school completely till eight, they'll catch up in a year. In a year, they'll catch up. Lincoln's, uh, Lincoln's nine. At the beginning of the school year, I know his head teacher, we do a co-op, was really concerned about his reading skills. Really concerned. 
we got them tutoring, I don't know, once a week, every other week, something like that. It's so minor. So minor. He's completely fine. Right. Totally fine. Nothing's wrong. Sometimes you just got to let their um, interests catch yeah. up. Let their... Let him just play. Oh, I mean, want school to so be much enjoyable. Yeah. I hated school. I just because mm-hmm. I was ADD, I couldn't concentrate and sit still and all those things, and it was just mm-hmm. a, it was terrible. Learn in different ways. Different, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ryan, this has been so fun. Just went so fast. I, I can you believe it? Too so fast. Yeah, we'll do it again though. <laughs> too fast. Because we're close. Yes, we need to do. I'll this have again. you down. You can come on the podcast. I won't record in my car. I'm gonna find another place to record. <laughs> If you do, I'll be driving. That's right. No, I, yeah, I park. I do that. You know, the other, <laughs> that's funny because I was thinking the other place I was going to record is our, we have a 15 passenger van and that's where I do most, that's my office. I park in the Garden of the Gods <laughs> preserve. Oh, that's so cool. And I just set up a table in my computer and I do all my work there. Yeah. That's a pretty nice office to yeah, have. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's free, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. It's free. But uh, Absolutely. we'll come down. Definitely come down, talk about adoption, talk about parenting, all that good stuff. Yeah. Just be real. That, yeah. That's what I love. That's what I love. I just find it's so, my heart just longs for people to just be, just be real. honest. Yeah, totally. just be honest. Good, yeah. bad, ugly, whatever. Just whatever. be honest. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time back here on Broken and Brilliant.